We are Foresight OT. Foresight OT stands for Operational Technologies. The OT cluster provides key for IR technologies and services needed to help industrial customers with their full end-to-end -end digital transformation journey while following a cost-effective, low-risk and self-funding methodology. This allows customers to remain competitive in the digital economy while making sure any digital initiative has a six-month or better return on investment. We combine digital technologies, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and a well-trained workforce. Together we accelerate digitalization across the value chain to bring you a safer workforce, greener energy efficiency, longer asset reliability, and faster productivity. We encourage our clients to continuously innovate to generate significant sustainable growth. Contact Foresight OT today. Good day everyone, hope you are doing well. My name is Andre Andrea. I'm a solution manager at Simulation Engineering Technologies and I've got many years of simulation and digital tooling experience using the Simio software applied in multiple industries. Today we are going to look at data-driven modeling for movable asset logistics. Developing simulation models for movable asset operations in heavy industries such as mining, is complex and time consuming. There are many dependencies on multiple systems and data sources, as well as interactions with overall operations. Just some background information. We will be focusing on the mining industry and more specifically on open pit mining and the load and haul operation in open pit mining. Some background information on open pit mining, also known as open cost mining. It is a surface mining technique that extracts minerals from an open pit in the ground. Open pit mining is the most common method used throughout the world for mineral mining and does not require extractive methods or tunnels. This surface mining technique is used when mineral or ore deposits are found relatively close to the surface of the earth. The benefits of open pit mining include the ease of use of mass production, small shutdown expenses, ability to mine selectively for certain grades of ore, which is extremely important, comparatively small crew sizes, elimination of safety hazards that can accompany complex mining underground, easy drainage of subsurface water, no machinery restrictions, even heavy and bulky machinery can be utilized, and lastly, lower capital and operating costs. So what are movable assets? Movable assets are your haul trucks, shovels, excavators or diggers, LHDs, which is load haul dump machines, front end loaders, drag lines, and so forth. The load and haul operation can be seen as a continuous cycle that is made up of different production steps or activities. The load and haul cycle is typically from where a truck gets loaded and hauls the material that has previously been fragmented by the drilling and blasting process to the next stage in the value chain, which is typically a crusher or a stockpile that feeds a processing plant. The first step in this sequence or this load and haul cycle is when material gets loaded at a bench or working face of the mine into the haul trucks. This is typically being done by excavators or in some instances, LHDs, FELs, or directly from drag lines. For such an operation or project, there are some major considerations to look at. The movable assets are the critical components for production and productivity in these operations. All trucks are typically the largest cost component to the operations and fleet optimization is usually complex and has many dependencies on other equipment and operations that they interact with. Therefore, simulation is uniquely capable of modeling this environment. Such models are complex and time consuming to develop 
and it is sometimes difficult to make changes to such models when the mind plan changes or the mind design changes. Also, when modeling new sites or new mines, it typically requires new models to be developed. There are many dependencies to develop these models, especially on the data side. And very important to know is in these operations, many of these movable asset fleets are already equipped with monitoring devices that collects a lot of data. So the key to all of this and the purpose of today is to look at data driven modeling and therefore we have to look at the data that is available. Fleet management systems monitor and record operational data on movable assets. However, the data is collected in real time, but it is only viewed in hindsight, resulting in reactive operations. The analysis of the collected data can provide valuable insights on utilization, availability, idle time, and so forth, but it lacks real time responsiveness. Therefore, it falls short when it comes to scheduling, planning, target adherence, and overall system performance improvements. Let's have a look at the data that was used for this example today. We extracted some raw data from a fleet, ma fleet management system. We looked at the truck data, which is just a subset of the total data in the database. And here you can see an example of some of the data that gets generated by the fleet management system, as well as simplistic reporting that they can provide. Here's an example of their truck data and the types of data that gets generated. And here is a zoomed in view to see what it represents. So the data components in all of this outside of the actual SIMEO model is the asset data, which we've seen in the previous slide, mine plan data, which is not necessarily always available in the fleet management data, operating rules, which is how the load and haul cycle operates and how the entire process and the system operates. And then further additional rules that can add accuracy to the, to the model is dispatch rules and prioritization rules, event identifiers, having identifiers in your data that trigger certain events and behavior in your logic, as well as the impact of external factors. So these are typically upstream and downstream activities that might have an impact on the behavior of your system. Let's look at the approach that was followed. So before we start with the process, the assumption is that there is a baseline model already in place. And this is part of the key. We have developed a proof of concept model using our proprietary mining logic and mining libraries in the Simio simulation software. This was built based on best practices, specific uh, load and haul cycles and sequences, mining operations based on years of experience in open pit mining. Using that baseline model, we can then look into the process. First of all, you would have to assess the raw data. That is the raw data being generated by fleet management systems. Identify the critical data that would drive all of your operations and is needed for the model to be accurate. This data they need to be transformed into a usable value adding format. And on the modeling side, you would then have to import the data, make updates to the logic, the generic logic if needed. And this is typically something like unique dispatch logic when a generic approach would not suffice for the client needs. And then you have to calibrate the model. The key in this entire process is to have all of this automated. And that is the big value add. And this is what we will show in our demo today. By integrating data driven simulation technology with fleet management system data, the simulation model will become a predictive analytics tool incorporating historical and real time data. 
and the integrated solution can support performance optimization, provide accurate planning and scheduling, be able to track data uh, on target adherence, su support proactive asset management, and improve cost management. With a data-driven modeling approach, the Simio simulation model uses fleet management data to automatically build the simulation model, inclusive of the haulage network. This approach enables a standardized methodology to be applied and reduces the time and costs associated with the construction of such models. The complex model logic is replaced with standardized proprietary approaches that we've developed, which is fully driven by the operational data in the Simio simulation software. And the key to this is that once you have a data set, even for different mining sites, the same approach can be followed with the same level of effort and a reduction in modeling time to get to a result. Let's have a look at the data that has been transformed that was imported from the fleet management software. Right, so here's an example of the truck data. So here we can see there's a lot of information in here. A little data transformation has been applied to this data, but we used this data set to extract shift related information all of our movable assets and types and all of these processes are automated through the transform data transformation steps already built in. Loading areas as well as their locations, uh, geographical locations and coordinates have been identified, the dumping areas and so forth. External to that, we have imported the mine plan from the mine planning software. This data was not included in the fleet management data that we are using. Okay, so let's switch to our model. So here we can see we've imported all of that data already in a usable format. And we've used the auto create function in Simio to already place all of our objects where we need it automatically, create those objects and have them associated with certain tables. These tables then make use of the relational database functionality and relational table functionality in Simio, which associates the truck data with the other tables. In combination with our proprietary approach and our proprietary logic, we are able then to automatically build an on-scale layout of the mine and the locations and points of interest of interaction where the movable assets interact with each other and perform all the mining activities as it would in a complex model. The key to this, though, is that everything is data driven. So we've got a, a large mining set of various assets uh, in our movable assets, which includes trucks, excavators and other equipment. So if we were to draw down for instance, to this piece of equipment. And remember, this is a reduced data set for the purpose of this exercise. And we look at, for instance, a specific dumping area and a specific loading area. We get a unique data set for a certain piece of equipment it's interacting with, the loading times at that uh, um, loading site, when it does a trip to this dumping area, what the time, dumping time would be, what the load capacity or, or full factor would be, cycle times, uh, other delays that are induced, and so forth. We can also look at the speed, acceleration, and other information. So the key to this is that given the combination of the logic, the data-driven approach, and the data available, we now have an accurate model that samples an actual database very similar to the input analyzer that Simio offers and uses that data to drive operations. And that means all of our interactions in the cycle is driven by actual data, not just the model um, being automatically built, but every sequence and every step in the model is driven by that database. 
and we can still apply statistical distributions to that data. So another approach could be to use the same model, and if you don't have good coordinates data, you can easily, using your data transformation techniques, build a matrix or grid layout like we have here. And even though it doesn't look uh, like it is on scale, the fact that the model is data driven means everything driving each cycle and in each interaction between the various locations um, and everything driven by the mine plan is in sequence as it should have been and would be in a detailed model. Meaning, even though this is a schematic grid layout, it is still just as accurate and generates the same results as an on-scale and detailed model would. So here's just uh, an example of typical results that you can generate from this. So this is actual results out of the, um, that quick run that we did. And um, to look at some of the outputs that gets generated and the value that gets delivered in this POC, we will see that we are definitely lowering the barrier to entry for mining digital twins. And we are bringing the industry a step closer to benefiting from digital twins. We are lowering the data maturity constraint that currently uh, exists in developing C, uh, these models and preventing true digital twins in mining. There is a significant decrease in modeling time and effort with minimal training and upskilling required. And there is a significant ROI on using such an approach. Further benefits if this can be integrated uh, seamlessly to feed management software and into the digital environment of the mine, it would result in better yields and utilization of the mining value chain, performance optimization, accurate planning and scheduling. It would enable dynamic rescheduling. You'll be able to track and analyze your target adherence in real time. This will allow you to make dynamic decisions dynamic decision support, proactive asset management, and improved cost management. So what does the future hold for this? So imagine if we can start integrating real-time asset location data, real-time geology data, so the makeup of the ore and the ground and the soil and the material of where those assets are at, real-time production data, real-time delay event data. So that is, uh, for instance, when a reliability event happens, that that data triggers a, a model rerun and real-time material flow data, as well as data from external factors, such as an event at the processing plant or at the stockpile. So potential sources of this would be mining and plant MES systems, that is manufacturing execution systems, mine planning suites, metal accounting solutions, and end-to-end -end data integration and data availability will essentially allow for true digital transformation in mining operations. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Andre, for a great presentation. Uh, we have a lot of great questions to get to uh, if you're ready to take them. <laughs> First question, can you speak about the variability presented in these models? To get an accurate data set that uh, um, we can sample from. So the variance that we um, get there is actually based on uh, the actual variance in your data set that is actual recordings of uh, those activities or, or the specific tasks. Uh, but that being said, um, part of your data transformation steps, uh, you can, uh, we've got some data transformation um, techniques that we use externally in Simio that we actually use a, a sample set like that and do um, some form of distributing fit, distribution fitting. So your variability can either be presented, um, you know, from sampling a actual data set or 
uh, generating a distribution that you would then apply to the data when it is being sampled. So um, what it comes down to is that uh, once the data is um, clean and of uh, uh, sufficient integrity, the data set that we use in these models would represent um, actual operations pretty accurately, inclusive of their variability. Further to that, because we are also modeling, so that is just in, in the data, because we are modeling um, the actual operations like a detailed simulation model would, all of the activity sequences, uh, interdependencies, and so forth, you know, there is inherent queuing logic in, uh, um, in our model that um, you would get it similar to, to any other detailed model. And uh, if you start adding small tweaks like um, tweaking um, dispatch rules and so on, you get unique behavior like the, the actual system would, meaning you've got maybe certain um, restrictions to, to allocating uh, equipment for a specific task because there's already um, a number of machines, you know, uh, en route to a specific point or something like that. So those are the small tweaks, essentially the only tweaks really you have to make uh, using this approach. But the combination of all of this uh, results in a accurate model with all the appropriate real world variability um, embedded in your, in your logic. All right, let's dig in more. We have a lot of questions about your data. So let's talk more about how, how much data cleanup was needed before importing data into Simio. Were the data so, transformations yeah. cleaned inside Simio? If not, what application was used? Okay, yeah, thanks. So in, in this specific example, um, we didn't have to do a lot of data cleanup. Uh, so the, the technology used is, is pretty good. It's, it's, it's a modern uh, um, technology and interface where we, where we source the data from. And they already have um, algorithms in place that are able to identify uh, data anomalies. So uh, we didn't have to do uh, that much um, you know, of, of data cleansing with it. In terms of data transformation, there's a few ways to do it. Um, I think you know the easiest is, is often the best. So in Excel, for instance, we, we played around with uh, using scripts. That is the, the more complex way, but it's, it's more flexible. But uh, in this case, we use PAL query. So it's a, a method of uh, um, using, uh, you know, uh, various queries similar to, to Power BI and so on, that you can actually transform the data and um, extract data with, uh, you know, certain rules and so on. So the data transformation uh, was actually quite easy to do. It's, it's not too complex. However, that being said, we worked with a, a pretty good uh, data set, uh, you know, from, uh, from this partner that uh, provided the feed, feed management uh, data. Um, and depending on who you are working with and integrating with from a feed, feed management um, data perspective, uh, the challenges might be um, different, you know, uh, wherever you go. And, and that is the key, like I said, um, in, in the entire process to, to first assess the data and identify the critical data and then transform the data. So, so those three steps can be in place. And it, it, it really wouldn't uh, take too long to, to work through that once you've got the, the right data set and, and have the right data transformation uh, in place. And the key there is uh, you're looking for, for a few important things to, to enable you to, to build this model. So locational data doesn't have to be um, coordinates. But if you are able to place all of your points of interest and points of interaction uh, where all of these equipments uh, perform their activities, if you have um, data on the equipment themselves, so for instance, even if it's just a unique identifier for a truck and related information to that truck, you know, in the data set, so that would be all of your um, activity times, cycles, things like that. And um, if you're able to identify uh, some of those critical aspects in the data, would, uh, which I feel would, would not be too difficult, then you can actually extract what you want, you know, through, through simple queries. And um, the idea then is to, to have that automated and standardized approach. So, right, so once we got it on the, on the first data set, uh, we tested uh, data for multiple other sites and worked perfectly each time um, to, to, to do that. So for this specific uh, client that generates data in a specific format, um, you know, it, it can easily be repeated. For a different partner, 
Um, you might have a few, few, few more steps, but knowing uh, what to look for and um, how to extract it is, is probably the key. And if you need to, to clean the data beforehand, you know, that, that can take a, um, a few steps as well. But uh, all in all, um, once you get that right and automated, um, you know, the, the, the rest of the process is actually <laughs> done by Simeo. And in Simeo itself, there's also a, a few steps one can take, you know, to, to make use of the data. And uh, we did that, you know. So, so there, like I mentioned, there's a, a bunch of uh, a logic already built in there um, that's un unfortunately confidential that I can't go and show you. <laughs> However, we make use of a lot of experience, first of all, uh, using Simeo in this industry and a lot of knowledge gained, you know, um, uh, from, you know, our entire knowledge base uh, within our company in Simeo where we can apply the Simeo logic and, well, what's available in Simeo in such a powerful manner that, um, you know, all of that data truly comes uh, uh, into its own uh, once embedded in our, in our logic. So uh, um, in the end, you know, it's not just uh, um, doing data transformation externally. Um, I wouldn't call it transformation necessarily, but it is maybe call it data empowerment, you know, in, inside Simeo. Once you, you um, have that platform of saying, well, I've structured the data, I know what, let's call it, what the structure in my model would look like, you know, for my data tables, I know how I want to use it. So if I can transform that data into the format that I want to use it, the model doesn't have to change once it, once it was built, like in this case, you know. So I yeah. basically um, add the model or add the data conform to, to, to the way I want to use it. And then, you know, um, the, the, the logic that was developed um, did the rest. So, uh, so yeah. And, well, Andre, I have one final question for you. We've had a lot of questions about your custom object, the vehicle. Uh, the question is, I can see the vehicle in your model is a custom object. What customizations did you make to the standard Simeo vehicle? So it's actually a combination. Uh, so it depends on, on you know, on the, on the hierarchy that you, uh, you know, in the model that you go to in the objects. However, what we did is, so for instance, uh, for the different types of equipment, we, we know, and, and it's, you know, it's uh, open, you know, source knowledge in mining that there are um, certain ways that certain operations work. So for instance, this was an open pit environment. We've got a load and all operations. So there are certain cycles uh, and sequences and activities that it can go through. So there, there are some variance, variances to that. But over the time, we've pre-programmed some of those sequences, meaning uh, step one has to happen before step two can happen. In between, there must be a, a trigger or another interaction with a certain type of um, uh, equipment or so on. So essentially, 90% of the time, it follows uh, uh, Simeo's um, inherent logic. The, the key there is how the equipment interacts with each other and how it waits for certain triggers and signals, um, you know, from other equipment or from the mine plan, which is... Um, basically on your model level of the modeling. So um, yes, there, there, there are some uh, custom logic and unique logic in there. However, um, on the model side, you know, maybe some of the truck control logic, uh, we've got some, some nice logic there, but on, on the equipment uh, piece itself, it is actually uh, more to do with uh, how to set up that vehicle to, to operate in that environment and to automatically identify and trigger certain steps and activities in the sequences. So in terms of controlling that vehicle, um, you know, it's uh, a majority of the pre-built Simeo logic. Well, Andre, thank you so much for a great presentation. Very interesting and very informative. And thank you again for just participating in, uh, in Simeo Sync. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, guys. Keep well.